out here in Virginia. I know you've been seeing a lot of ads, you've been getting a lot of calls, you've been reading a lot about this election in the newspaper. But being here today to talk to you about health care, that's what I'm going to talk about today, the health care crisis. This isn't politics for me. This is personal. I'm thinking today about my mother. She died of ovarian cancer at the age of 53. She fought, she fought valiantly. She endured the pain and chemotherapy with grace and good humor. But I'll never forget how she spent her final months of her life. At a time when she should have been focused on getting well. At a time when she should have been taking stock of her life and taking comfort from her family. She was lying in a hospital bed fighting with her insurance company because they didn't want to cover her treatment. They claimed that her cancer was a pre-existing condition, and so maybe they didn't have to pay. So I know something about the heartbreak caused not just by a loved one being sick, but by our broken health care system. I know something about the anxiety of families hanging on by a thread as premiums have doubled these past eight years. They're going into debt in more than half, half of all personal bankruptcies caused in part by medical bills. I know about the frustration of nearly 40% of small business owners who can no longer afford to insure their employees. Folks who work day and night but have to lay people off or shut their doors for good because of rising health care costs. I know the outrage we all feel about 45 million Americans who don't have health insurance, kids who can't see a doctor when they're sick, parents cutting their pills in half and praying for the best, folks who wind up in the emergency room in the middle of the night because they've got nowhere else to turn. I know this is not who we are. This is not who we are as Americans. We're not a country where young women I met should have to work the night shift after a full day of college and still not be able to pay the medical bills for her sister who's ill. That's not right. We've never been a country that lets major challenges go unsolved and unaddressed. And we are tired of watching as year after year, candidates offer up detailed health care plans with great fanfare and promise only to see them crushed under the weight of Washington politics and drug and insurance lobbying once the campaign is over. That is not who we are. That is not who we have to be. Enough is enough. It is time for us to change. Contrary to what my opponent John McCain says, the fundamentals of our economy are not strong. The fundamentals of our economy are weak. And we've got to address those fundamentals and address them right now. In other words, the question isn't how we can afford to focus on health care. 
The question is, how can we afford not to? Senator McCain's been eager to share some of the details of his plan, but not all of the details. He tells you that he'll give you a tax credit of $2,500 per person, $5,000 per family, to help you pay for your insurance and health care costs. Sounds good, right? But like those ads for prescription drugs, you've got to read the fine print. If you make $40,000 a year and you've got a health care plan that costs your employer $10,000, now instead of being taxed on $40,000, you're going to be taxed on $50,000. Your taxes go up under his plan. The bottom line, the better your health care plan, the harder you fought for your good benefits, the higher the taxes you'll pay under John McCain's plan. And here's something else Senator McCain won't tell you. When he taxes people benefits, many younger, healthier workers will decide it's better for them to just opt out of getting insurance at the places where they work. Instead, they'll go out into the marketplace where your family will be given that $5,000 tax credit and told to buy insurance on your own. $5,000 tax credit sounds good. But what Senator McCain doesn't tell you is the average cost of a family health care plan these days is more than twice that much. It's $12,680. So where would that leave you? Broke. <laughs> Senator McCain also doesn't tell you that insurance in the individual market isn't just more expensive than insurance you get through work. It also includes fewer benefits. For example, many of these plans that you've got to buy on your own instead of getting it through your employer, they don't cover prescription drugs. They don't cover prenatal care. Many don't cover birth. I know that nothing is more important than the health and well-being of the people you love. You know, I have two daughters. I think about if I were a parent and I wasn't sure that I could provide health care for those kids, I don't know what I'd do. If you, if you work hard and do everything right, you shouldn't live in fear of losing everything because of a fluke of genetics or a bad diagnosis or a stroke of bad luck. That's why I believe that every single American has the right to affordable, accessible health care. A right that should never be subject to Washington politics or industry profiteering and that should never be purchased with tax increases on middle class families because that is the last thing we need in an economy like this. Folks are already having a tough enough time. So I reject the tired old debate that says we have to choose between two extremes. Government run health care with higher taxes or insurance companies without rules denying people coverage. That's a false choice. The same distracting rhetoric that kept us gridlocked for decades. And we know that neither of these approaches is the answer to this problem. The real solution is to take on drug and insurance companies, modernize our health care system for the 21st century, reduce costs for families and businesses, and finally provide affordable, accessible health care for every single American. And that's what I intend to do as President of the United States. I will never give up. I will never stop fighting until we have fixed our health care system and no family ever has to go what you're going through, what my mother went through, what so many people go through every single day in this country. That is my promise to you. And if you will stand here today, stand with me in this work, if you will talk to your friends and talk to your neighbors and get people to the polls and give me your vote, then together we will not just win Virginia, we will win this general election. And together, you and I, we will transform this nation and transform the world. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.